thank you so much. And uh, you got a, a lot of people in, in this uh, presentation and uh, you're running something extraordinary that you got so many people sharing so many different ideas. I don't know what ideas people can get out of this. You know, actually it would be interesting to have a quiz, you know. So so my, my, my plan is really fairly simple. You know, I want to talk a little bit about uh, assessment from a much broader sense, you know, much broader sense. You know, uh, I assume a lot of your uh, audience are from the UK. Uh, many years ago, you know, by the way, UK is uh, is kind of in, in a mess. Remember you had a, uh, some guy called Michael Gove, uh, you know, he, uh, he was the Secretary of uh, State for Education. And it was many years ago. And he wrote, I think, in the, in the, in the uh, Telegraph after he came back from a visit in Shanghai and Singapore. And he was saying, I'm happy to confess I'd like us to implement a cultural revolution just like the one they've had in China. Like Chairman Mao, we've embarked on a long march to reform our education system. That was really shocking to me, uh, you know, in, in many ways. The, 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 the British, actually the English in particular, have had a high aspiration uh, for being ranked high on the international test called PISA, P-I-S-A, you know, the, the program for international students assessment. And you've been lamenting a lot on how British or English students are not doing as well as students in Singapore, in Finland, or in Asia, in China. And Americans have had the same view. They said, we need to reform our education because our students simply don't do as well as students in East Asian countries, like, again, China, uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Korea. So they've always said we are getting worse. We are in decline. And of course, in Britain, you borrowed math from Shanghai. You flew in teachers from Shanghai, you know, to 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 solve your education problem. That was seemed to be the. But then you you go back to to look at this historical data. Uh, the historical data, I'm, unfortunately, I cannot show you, uh, you know, all the uh, historical data. You will see American education, for example, was not getting worse, was not in decline, and uh, it had always been bad. America has been always been bad. If you go back to the first international mathematics study in the 1960s, American students, 12th graders, ranked 12th out of 12 countries. Now, if you know math, that's pretty bad. Okay, now that, that is actually very bad. If you, 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 12th out of 12 countries. Britain wasn't doing any better, actually much better. So he said, well, how come America is still here? You know, those students graduating in the 1960s, they were the worst in math in the world, but they have, kind of most of them have retired already. So they have not ruined this country. So which got me to think a lot about uh, what, uh, what is assessment? What's assessment about and why do we have it? So if you go through historical data, you will discover something really interesting. First, you know, what I call this phenomenon called what works may hurt. What works may, may, may hurt. So the idea is that a lot of the um, a lot of this data, you know, we see is only partial data. And if you look at test scores, test scores will show Americans, the English, and uh, the uh, Australians. They do much worse than East Asian students. But then you look at the other piece of data, which is not captured in most of the media report, and that is the data called non-cognitive data. So you look at American data since 1960s to 70s, 80s, 90s, American students, they are really bad, but they never think they're bad. So they have higher confidence than Koreans, Singaporeans, and Chinese, and all those, th those people. So you, if you analyze that data, you will say, well, what matters? And today, this is especially important. We 
spend so much time, every teacher, every school system, every government is forcing students into a lot of testing analysis, but they're only testing if they have mastered, if they have learned what they we want them to learn or against government standards. But what really drives people perhaps is the long-term evidence, long-term competences such as confidence, curiosity, creativity, uh, resistance, uh, uh, you know, all of those things are never captured. So what I want to end is in a very short way to say that in education, we have a new practice. It's called evidence-based practice. But what evidence you collect matters a lot. Matters a lot. What evidence you collect matters a lot. For example, in your class, if you're teaching students to say, okay, one way is to say, okay, you will master this math. But by teaching them that math, if the students lost interest and confidence, is that teaching you want? So that you know you, you can have the short-term outcome. Yes, I've mastered math, I've got an A, I'm I'm doing well. But if the students begin to hate you, hate the math, hate school, is that worth it? In special education, we subject our, a lot of our students to those conditions. We try to fix them, but then lose interest. Is that what matters? We also have seen a lot of psychological studies showing that, you know, when younger children, you try to teach them how to play with a toy, they actually lose interest. And so interest and curiosity are lifelong outcomes, but in a learning, you can destroy that. So what I really want to bring us to one thing, which I wrote a book about, is called What Works May Hurt, Side Effects in Education. I have also on my website, if you want to check it out, you can find that. So think about the side effects. When you are teaching something, what you are ruining. When you are helping students learn something, what do they lose? And what they lost? might be more impactful in the future. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's really kind of really interesting. D does anyone have any questions for Yong? Um, if you do, could you raise your hand, please? And you can ask the question. I want to make sure you get uh, you got your schedule on, you know, back on schedule. We have, uh, I think I'm pronouncing this right, Papula Pereira. So if I could, I think they've just had their hand raised. Right, you've got allow. Right, the camera mic's active. Only if I time. did it by mistake, sorry. Oh, OK, <laughs> thank sorry. you. No worries. OK, um, I'm so sorry. In the interest of keeping to time, then if we if we stop there, but if you do have any questions, please, please send them to me and I can pass them on to Yong. Uh, but thank you. So thank you again, Yong, for, for joining us today. It was really, really kind of you to share your thoughts and experiences with everyone. And what I'll do is I will drop the links to your website into the chat so everyone can take a closer look at that. So thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye.